Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Owen Mackin about the horror film The Cellar. It debuted at South by Southwest, but it's going to be available on Shutter April 15th. Thank you so much for doing this. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Very much looking forward to it. Thank I mean, it's you. pretty exciting. I mean, South by Southwest has been a big deal for a long time now, I feel like. And, you know, the horror movies and the selections every year are very highly anticipated. So this film kind of debuts there. You get announced for Shudder. I mean, you must be elated, you and the cast, about this film and the reception so far. It's pretty awesome. No, it's it's great. It's great. I mean, honestly, South by has, has been one of my favorite festivals over the years. I think they they discover really cool indie films, and I think they got a great horror section. So we were like, we were stoked, you know, to play. And we also got to play we premiered on like uh, the midnight section on Saturday night in South by, and it was like the first one of the first times to go back to a film festival in a couple of years. So it, it was pretty special. And I think you know, Brendan. I think he, he directed a really, really, really scary movie, and I kind of. Uh, <laughs> like the right place like watch, watching that in a cinema with people after like the last two years and you couldn't it was it was great it's it by far one of my favorite genres can two-part question for you in terms of as a fan because you might not be a fan but like where do where do horror movies fan like rank for you as like a fan of them and then where do they rank with you making them so i, I mean i i love horror movies yeah. but they scare the hell out of me <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which is which is why you kind of end up being so. Like I remember, um, like Rosemary's Baby has always been one of my favorites. Oh yeah, and I think that's kind of what I like about the cellar in a way because it eases you in and it drags you in. But like, I'm I'm kind of a bit of a uh, like I remember I watched Wreck too. Remember Wreck? Oh yeah, so yeah. scary. I watched Wreck two in the cinema like about ten years ago, wherever it was, and I was so scared I had to leave the cinema, take a break, go get some water, and come back. Yeah, because. You know, those movies get into my head and I'm like, I know I got to go home on my own and I can't. But it's cool to be on the other side of that, the people that made it and they're like, look what you did, right? Like, you made yeah. it. <laughs> like, they're yeah. probably like sitting at a pub like, look what we did. Like, we're scaring many households. <laughs> I was scared. No, I hadn't seen it till the premiere on Saturday because I deliberately didn't want to watch it till I saw it in the cinema and I wasn't expecting so much of what was happening and like it actually scared the hell out of me. And I'll tell you what I love about it personally because I watched it and I've just like it's 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 a fun time for a horror movie fan because the arcs of a lot of the characters I feel like really build up in a right in a great way. But one of the things I like about it is we're having a lot of horror movies that have different ways of scaring you. And, and right. again, there's a lot of like different things that a new kind of age horror things that happen in the cellar, but it has its traditional kind of horror moments as well. and feels like a traditional one. Do you know what I mean by that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, of course. And that's, that's, that's what's cool about horror movies, right? You want to make a horror movie that kind of, uh, it kind of follows what the kind of genre should be, where it's scary and you kind of, you know, you got certain expectations, but also you can kind of subvert certain kind of elements within like both from a character point of view and a social point of view. And there's something about horror movies where like you don't get to do those same type of sort of set pieces and shots no. that you do in horror movies where you get sucked in and you're like, oh, this is awesome. Like it becomes like proper cinema if it's done really well. I don't know about you, but so I'm a 91. So in 05, I was able to go see, like I was 14, right? So I was able to go to see all the PG-13 horror movies, right? So I remember yeah. that that was the year, like House of Wax, Amity of the Horror, Dark Water, like all those came out. And you go I see was, them yeah. all. So you've seen Alicia and Bungie. You've seen House of yeah. Wax, Alicia. House of Wax. Oh, the, like, so like one of my favorites, because that was the first horror movie I've ever went to go see in the theater. Oh, nice. Like, that's a cool... Okay. I interviewed Brian Van Holt to put his bow in that movie recently for another project, and I brought that up to him, and he was like, yeah, man, he's like... And he, he brought it up, too. He's like, Alicia's in a new horror movie, too. Like, he brought it up, yeah. too. So it was that. But, like, the thing is, it's, like, it's weird to me, and I don't know about you, like, horror movies are... It's huge right now. It's, like, mainstream right. almost. It's still weird to me, because me growing up, it wasn't, like... Yeah, mainstream. no, it, 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 it was so much more niche, right? And you yeah. go, like, the video... Or like, because I mean, I'm a little older than you, so I used to go to the video store in the '90s, and uh, and you'd be trying to get 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 a get get some videotapes, and all the kind of horror section was always much smaller, yep. and it was always like Halloween or a couple of these other. It was always like very specific ones. If you wanted to get like something, like if you wanted to get Nosferatu or something like that, you couldn't get it. Yeah, you had to 
order it or like it has to be sent to you on post or go like a really niche video store. And now <laughs> you can get now you can get the coolest horror movies all the time and like some of the most coolest ones like the last 10 years. It's amazing. Yeah. There used to be like a McDonald's near the movie theater we would always go to. So we'd get a, grab a bite to eat before the movie. Like, understandable. And it was like the same people that would work on like the weekends, right? So they would ask us, be like, hey, like what movie are you going to see? And you tell them like the movie, it's like a horror movie. They're like, Oh, okay, cool. Like, look at that. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, because people used to look down on horror movies. And then, then it's kind of like, so I directed a horror movie that we had in Fright Fest, I guess it was maybe 12, 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. And, and even then, I think like horror, like Fright Fest now is massive, right? Mm-hmm. And I think even then, you know, 12, 13, 15 years ago, horror was still considered to be niche. Yeah, absolutely. And did horror. Now it's like horror has become far more mainstream and it's like far more... It's 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 there's so many more interesting ideas I think that you're allowed to do in horror that you couldn't do before. There's an amazing synergy, Owen, and tag team with festivals and horror specifically. Do you think that has to do with the communal aspect of it? Because the horror movie yeah, fans are insane. It's amazing. Yeah, they're the best because when you want to watch a movie in the cinema with people, yeah. right? And horror movies are one of those ones that like you actually connect to people because you're experiencing like fear and humor and terror and stuff. And and you know you, you don't you don't kind of get that same sort of like draw like kind of culty tribal following towards like just watching an action movie yeah so it's absolutely not, it's not the same the horror stuff's different what can you tell us about filming the film what was it like working with alicia how does it feel for the movie to be going on shutter like like what, what what's going for your mind these days with everything i mean i'm just pumped because it's one of those ones where we're already proud of it and it's yep. uh i i always i want i worked with brendan years ago just like a small part in one of his first movies i was really excited to do like a like a full movie with him and mm-hmm. um, i hadn't met alicia before but I, I i knew she was great we met we like got on super and uh it was so much fun you yeah. know and like we, we had a really good time but we had a good time because it was like the way brendan crafted it with, with us he, he gave us a space to he really wanted to work on the character elements because for him it was all about drawing in the audience and kind yep. of getting to care about them so so we enjoyed it and I wasn't expecting some of the like really cool shit that he pulled off in it. Cause there's a lot. You, know, you yeah, agree with what I said in the beginning though? No, about- yeah, I, I was like, I was like having a walk through the forest, drinking a cup of coffee and he's off shooting these amazing, these set, <laughs> set pieces. And I was like, Oh, what you guys do? He's like, Oh, you know, I'm like, all right, great. Well, it's amazing to see it. And you know, you probably talk to a lot of the team and the directors and everything. And they have kind of like ideas of like what they want to do with the movie. And then it's one thing, then like they actually do it. You know what I mean? Like it's one thing to be like, oh, and I have this idea, right? Like for a scene and then you do it and it's like, whoa, like we pulled yeah. it off, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and that's just really exciting about it. Cause it, you know, you get to see what everyone creates. Look, when you're, when you're filming on set, you're doing a very specific thing. Mm-hmm. right and then like your dp who is tom has a very specific vision and then but once you bring in like the sound guys and special effects guys and and, and like the kind of the, your composer you just you just build this whole tapestry and then you're like oh now they've created something cool yeah I, like- i'm so stoked it's gonna be on shutter like that's yeah all, that's so yeah, cool great. right like it's yeah. awesome right yeah. A great platform to really cool horror films and like they're really so like it's really important so yeah we're, we're really stoked about that wants to talk about another project you know you're in nbc's la brea Yes. Which, that was one of those shows where I saw the first kind of ads on TV about it, right, coming soon. And then you watch it, you're like, yeah, I'm in. You know what I mean? And you continue watching it. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, Good, that, right? that's what it was. Because like they, there was a lot of hype around it. There was a lot of excitement around it. it there was a lot of ads around it. And then you kind of watch it and you're like, wow, like this is, there's a lot happening in this. And you got renewed for season two, which is amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, what's it like working on a show like that with different kind of worlds? Not really horror, but kind of like one of these kind of crazy worlds with the show La Brea. I mean, I, I'm actually just in Australia right now. I'm actually after this, I'm going to go do my first costume fitting for season two. So we just got here. Like, uh, 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 so I, I'm looking forward to my first meeting in Australia. But no, it was... I, I love like sci-fi and fantasy and stuff is kind of my jam. Yep. So I, I love that. All the possibilities are kind of what, what the show can be. And you're going on these adventures. You know, I grew up like reading kind of Tolkien and, you know, it's kind of like Asimov and Tolkien were kind of what I, what I like to read. So mm-hmm. you're kind of almost the best of both worlds. We've got this cool science fiction and then we're going into, you know, 10,000 BC, which has, you know, forests and creatures and all sorts of stuff. So I'm, I'm just having fun. I'll be honest. Some episodes are like a slow burn, but some kind of go zero 100 and kind of hit you really hard sometimes. I'm curious, is that something you kind of notice when you're making it? Or do you kind of like, I'm wondering like, if do you see that sometimes that there is kind of this back and forth? I'm just curious about that a little bit. 
That's interesting. Um, no, not so much for me. It feels like every single ep- every single episode is like like that. Yeah, you know, what I mean, because you're kind of from an emotional point of view, like there's a lot of driving force through it. So you're kind of just sort of staying up here all the time, and then it kind of just depends. But there's dialogue between characters that just seem like one little conversation that you're just kind of like, "Where's this going?" It's like, "Oh man!" Like it really yeah, like yeah. <laughs> builds up. You know what I mean? <laughs> we kidnapped by these people over the hill. We got to go do it now. By the way, you should get some new pants. Yeah. <laughs> No, but it's 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 amazing. It, when you're reading a script for that, mm. you know, you brought up like the fantasy aspect of it. Is it cool? Like something like that, there's a script, but there's just so many like the the possibilities are endless. Like well, what can happen yeah. with the characters, what they can say, what they look like, and everything, right? I feel like that's this is a good script for something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, initially, like the reason why I wanted to do it was from like a character point of view because yeah. I, 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 I thought, I thought having, you know, it's always really interesting. I think when when you have when you have a male character, especially, and this goes back to the seller as well, where like Alicia is a female protagonist, is the one who's kind of running the show. And yeah. I thought that's really interesting as well with, with La Brea, where like when you're kind of slightly, um, uh, you're kind of you're, you're kind of disempowered. And and you kind of got these this male character actually can't isn't able to be in control of stuff and everyone thinks he's crazy. It's a really interesting spot to be, and he's yep. also got to try and get his shit together, look after his daughter. And it's, I thought it was really interesting just to kind of push and pull at what those levels were for this guy, and seeing somebody try and redeem himself, but also not really have a clue how to do that. I feel like a lot more characters are naturally just becoming complex because the scripts yep. just for the movies and for TV are just kind of unbelievable, and they're written with characters in mind that just have so much kind of thrown in and so much kind of complex yeah. dynamics um but do you think that's interesting in terms of like so just to go back to the horror thing like yeah. horror horror was always that kind of genre that, that that allowed really complex female characters right yes and always the world for that and now that's sort of becoming more of a kind of a you know more action and more dramas allowing more complex female characters and i wonder is that also then sort of feeding into taking away from this the kind of singular male protagonist who kind of is, is clearly right all the time and it's making them all more complex as a virtue of kind of balancing. A hundred percent. But at the end of the day too, this isn't a very articulated horror film, The Cellar. You agree with me on that one, right? Yeah. Like it's not just kind of a black and white, like, you know, family goes to a house. Like even if you watch the trailer, like it's, there's way more to it. You know what I mean? Um, but I just feel like, you know, you're not just kind of a family. Like, everyone kind of has things going on, right? Like, everyone is kind of... And it's not like that. At, like, they're making them on, like like that because of the writing, I feel like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I can yeah. ask you, I could be like, are you driven towards complex characters, Owen? But I feel like a lot of the characters that you probably, you know, go in and work for are naturally kind of complex because the way things are being written. You know what I mean? That's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's totally true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point, and and that's that's something that that kind of um, I guess you know you have to be clever. I think with with, with films and with television now because people are more aware. Because you know even in the nineties, you, you kind of there was less or it was less kind of films or TV shows you to watch. Yeah, and and I think that like when when certain television shows have come out, like Breaking Bad, for example, where the characters are really complex, you kind of then start to have expectations of that. Yeah. And I think the same thing with horror films, you have expectations of kind of what the character should go through because you're like, well, you know, because you just learn to box clever as an audience in terms of what you want or what you want to see, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm excited for everyone to see this. You know, the seller April 15th is going to be available on Shudder. Um, and I wanted to thank you for coming on Pop Turn and chatting, Owen. This was awesome. A pleasure. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank absolutely. You, so, uh, yeah, April 15th on Shutter. They're going to be able to check it out. And uh, where can people follow you to keep up to date with everything on, on social media? Instagram? Uh, I do. I, I post a bunch of dumb pictures on Instagram. So you can always <laughs> get me there. Just just Owen C. Mackin at Instagram. E-O-I-N-C Mackin. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. You're going to be able to catch Owen Mackin in the cellar alongside Alicia Cuthbert, which is going to be on Shutter April 15th. Until next time, this is Owen and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.